Dr. Baliga here. This podcast is on two hot of the press articles. One published in JAMA, 2019, volume 322, pages 2191 to 2202. And the other is in the European Heart Journal, volume 40, page, page 3699 to 3706. The JAMA article is titled Association of valine 122 isoleucine hereditary transthyretin amyloidosis genetic variant with heart failure among individuals of African or Hispanic and Latino ancestry. The lead author is Dr. Scott Dummerer, MD. The authors are from two academic centers on the East Coast. One is the Perlman School of Medicine, University of Pennsylvania. And the second group of authors are from the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Genetic variation in the gene TTR encoding the protein transthyretin can result in misfolding of the tetrameric transthyretin protein complex, leading to accumulation of insoluble extracellular amyloid fibrils that clinically result in hereditary transthyretin amyloidosis. There are 120 different mutations and this autosomal disorder is of incomplete penetrance. Although polyneuropathy is one prominent clinical presentation of hereditary transthyretin amyloidosis, the deposition of amyloid fibers in the myocardium can lead to cardiomyopathy and is characterized by arrhythmias and heart failure. One of the most common causes of hereditary transthyretin amyloidosis cardiomyopathy is a valine to isoleucine amino acid substitution at position 122 in the TTR coding sequence that is primarily found in individuals of African ancestry. Given the ability to diagnose this disorder both with uh, pyrophosphate scanning and cardiac MRI and the ability to treat it with Transthyretin stabilizing small molecule tefamidis. Since tefamidis decreases cardiovascular related hospitalizations, improves quality of life, and decreases overall mortality. This paper is important in the current study. The association of TTR valine 122 isoleucine variant, the clinical diagnosis of heart failure, was evaluated using longitudinal electronic health record linked to genetic data from two large academic health systems. Among the TTR valine 122 isoleucine variant carriers with heart failure, the rates of evaluation for and diagnosis of hereditary transthyretin amyloidosis cardiomyopathy was assessed by these authors. Their objective was to assess the association between TTR B122 isoleucine variant and heart failure and identify rates of hereditary transthyretin amyloid cardiomyopathy diagnosis among carriers with heart failure. They conducted cross-section analysis of carriers and non-carriers of TTR valine 122 isoleucine of African ancestry aged 50 years or older enrolled in the Penn Medicine Biobank between 2008 and 2017 using electronic health records from 1996 to 2017. Case control study in participants of African and Hispanic Latino ancestry with and without heart failure in Mount Sinai Biobank enrolled between 2007 and 2015 using electronic health record from 2007 to 2018. The main outcomes were the primary outcome was primary heart failure, the rate of diagnosis with hereditary transthyretin amyloid cardiomyopathy among TTR valine 122 isoleucine carriers with heart failure was measured. What did these investigators find? The cross national cohort included 3,724 individuals of African ancestry with a median age of 64 years. Interquartile range 57 to 71. 47 percent were male, 
78% had a diagnosis of high blood pressure, 20% had a diagnosis of a history of myocardial infarction or coronary revascularization. There were 116 TTR, valine 122 isoleucine carriers, that is 3.1%. 30%, that is 1,121 participants had heart failure. The case control study consisted of 2,007 individuals of African ancestry and 3,663 Hispanic or Latino individuals. The median age was 73 years, intercordial range 68 to 80. 38% were male, 79% had a diagnosis of hypertension and 17% had a history of myocardial infarction or coronary revascularization. There were 1,376 cases of heart failure. TTR valine 122 isoleucine was associated with higher rates of heart failure. In the cross-sectional cohort, 51 out of 116 were, had, were TTR valine 122 isoleucine carriers, that is 44%. 30% were non-carriers. Adjusted odds ratio is 1.7. 95% confidence interval was 1.2 to 2.4, P equaled 0 0.006. In the case control study, 36 out of 1,376 heart failure cases, that is 2.6%. 82 out of 4,594 were controls, that's 1.8%. Adjusted odds ratio was 1.8, 95% confidence interval was 1.2 to 2.7. The p-value was 0 0.008. 10 of the 92 TTR valine 122 isolution carriers to heart failure, that was about 11%, were diagnosed to, as having hereditary transthyretin amyloid cardiomyopathy. The medium time from the onset of symptoms to clinical diagnosis was 3 years. The study authors concluded among individuals of African or Hispanic or Latino ancestry, the transthyretin valine 122 isoleucine genetic variant was significantly associated with heart failure. These results are consistent with findings from previous prospective cohort studies, including the cardiovascular health study and the atherosclerosis risk in community study or the ERIC study. In their discussion, the authors say, that despite having phenotypic characteristics of hereditary transthyretin amyloid cardiomyopathy, very few individuals of African ancestry with heart failure underwent evaluation for hereditary transthyretin amyloid cardiomyopathy or generic testing of TTR, valine 122 isoleucine in standard clinical practice. Furthermore, for the minority that were diagnosed, there were lengthy delays in obtaining a molecular diagnosis of hereditary transthyretin amyloid cardiomyopathy. This suggests that even in tertiary referral centers, there is significant under-recognition, under-diagnosis and delay in diagnosis of transthyretin cardiac amyloid as a cause of heart failure in older individuals of African ancestry. Individuals of self-reported Hispanic or Latino ancestry from the New York City region are known to have a significant level of recent African ancestry due to admixture and thus harbor unrecognized risk of hereditary transthyretin amyloid cardiomyopathy due to the TTR valine 122 isoleucine variant which may be overlooked for testing and treatment. The recent development of efficacious targeted therapies for transthyretin amyloid disease has increased the urgency of, of prompt diagnosis of hereditary transthyretin amyloid cardiomyopathy, including that due to TTR, valine 122 isoleucine variant. The next article hot off the press is treatment of cardiac transthyretin amyloidosis and update from the European Heart Journal 2019, volume 40, pages 3699 to 3706 authored by Michel Emden and co-authors. Key points to remember from this update in treatment of cardiac transthyretin amyloidosis. Point number one, 
Transthyretin is a highly conserved protein involved in the transportation of thyroxine T4 and retinol binding protein. It is synthesized mostly in the liver and is rich in beta strands with an intrinsic propensity to aggregate into insoluble amyloid fibers which deposit within tissue leading to development of TTR related amyloidosis. ATTR can follow the deposition of either variant TTR previously known as mutant ATTR or wild type TTR. Cardiac related amyloidosis due to transthyretin has a favorable survival rate compared to light chain amyloidosis with a median survival of 75 versus 11 months. However, transthyretin related cardiomyopathy is a progressive disorder and newer therapeutic options include tefamidis which was positive in a phase 3 clinical trial and possibly patisiran and inotercin. Inhibition of the synthesis of muted transthyretin. There are three key points. The first, liver transplantation removes the source of mutated TTR molecules and prolongs survival with a 20 year survival of 55.3%. However, tissue accumulation of TTR can continue after liver transplantation because TTR amyloid fibers promote subsequent deposition of wild type ATTR. Combined liver heart transplantation is feasible in younger patients with variant ATTR cardiomyopathy and a small series suggests better prognosis than cardiac transplantation. Point number two regarding inhibition of the synthesis of mutated transthyretin. Inhibition of TTR gene expression. Patiserin is a small interfering RNA blocking agent which um, impacts the expression of both variant and wild type TTR. The basis of the Apollo trial, it was approved for therapy of adults with variant ATTR related polyneuropathy both in the US and European Union. In this trial, Patisiran promoted favorable myocardial remodeling based on ECHO and N-terminal BNP, NT-BNP changes. This effect was not demonstrated for inotercin and is still under investigation for tefamidis. Point number three regarding inhibition of the synthesis of mutated transthyretin. Antisense oligonucleotides like inotercin inhibits the production of both variant and wild type TTR. Based on the findings of the neuro TTR trial, the FDA approved this agent for patients with variant ATTR related polyneuropathy. In the neuro TTR trial, cardiomyopathy was present in 63%, but the study was not powered to measure effects of inotercin on heart disease. Inotercin can cause thrombocytopenia and must be used cautiously in those with bleeding risk. The authors of this article then discuss tetramer stabilization. Two main points, selective stabilizers including tefamidis and AG10. Tefamidis is a benzoxazole and a small molecule that inhibits the dissociation of TTR tetramers by binding the T4 binding sites. The ATTRACT study, ATTRACT, showed that when comparing the pooled tefamidis arms, that is 80 and 20 milligrams, with the placebo arm, tefamidis was associated with lower all cause mortality than placebo. 78 out of 264, that is 29.5% versus 76 out of 177, 42.9%. Hazard ratio 0.7, 95% confidence interval, 0.51 to 0.96, and a lower rate of cardiovascular hospitalizations. With a relative risk ratio of 0.68, that is 0.48 per year versus 0.70 per year for placebo. 95% confidence interval was 0.56 to 0.81. The Kaplan-Meier survival course showed that tefamidis resulted in reduction in all-cause mortality with the curves diverging after approximately 18 months of treatment. 
in agreement with the concept of tafamidis as a disease modifying drug additionally tafamidis was able to relieve symptoms as demonstrated by the lower rate of decline in 6 minute walking distance and the quality of life in the cancer city cardiomyopathy questionnaire overall summary at 30 months for both the p value was less than 0.001 the drug was also well tolerated with a similar incidence and type of adverse events between tafamidis and the placebo group furthermore diarrhea and urinary tract infection that is common adverse events in patients with attr were less common among patients receiving tafamidis than placebo a detailed assessment of the effects of tafamidis on nt pro bnp troponins and echocardiographic measurements is currently ongoing across patient subgroups including wild type attr versus variant attr nyhi class 1 to 2 versus class 3 tafamidis dose 80 mg versus 20 mg the difference in all cause mortality and frequency of cardiovascular related hospitalizations favored tafamidis over placebo in contrast among patients in nyhi class 3 at baseline those receiving tafamidis had higher hospitalization rates possibly because of a longer survival during a more severe phase of the disease the authors point out an adequately powered survival analysis in nyhi class 3 patients would be wor- worthwhile following these results tafamidis has received the breakthrough therapy designation from the fda for treatment of patients with transthyretin cardiomyopathy which may prelude to an accelerated evaluation of tafamidis as a therapy for this condition the selective ttr stabilizer eg10 has been evaluated in phase 2 randomized double blind placebo controlled multi center study enrolling 47 patients with symptomatic attr cardiomyopathy both variant and wild type in november 2018 the positive results of the study were uh, were announced eg10 was well tolerated increased circulating ttr levels which is considered as a positive effect possibly linked to lower tissue deposition and induced near complete stabilization of transthyretin a phase 3 trial is is planned to be initiated in the early half of this year non selective agents diflunisal is a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug which complexes to t4 binding sites and stabilizes ttr tetramers thus preventing uh, amyloid fibril formation in vitro in one open label study small study it was not effective in relieving cardiac dysfunction as lv mass ejection fraction or cardiac biomarkers and this is possibly because of the limited follow up duration it's about 0.9 plus or minus 0.3 years however diflunisal appear to be safe in the same patients although adverse effects from a chronic nsaid treatment are a source of concern the next broad heading is um, inhibition of oligomer aggregation and oligomer disruption epigallocatechin gallate is the most abundant catechin in green tea epigallocatechin 3 gallate binds to soluble ttr decreasing the likelihood of tetramer dissociation it inhibits oligomer aggregation into amyloid fibrils and thus promotes the disaggregation of ttr amyloid fibers in a single center open label study 30 patients with cardiac attr both variant and wild type received the drug and was compared with 35 cardiac attr patients treated with heart failure supported therapy alone over a 12 month period it did not improve survival and did not change the echo parameters or nt pro bnp compared with baseline the next broad heading is degradation and resorption of amyloid fibers two important points regarding de- degradation and resorption of amyloid fibers doxycycline tetrodeoxycholic acid tudca has been evaluated in two small studies and the results appear to be modest more data is needed to confirm its e- efficacy the next point is antibodies targeting serum amyloid p protein or amyloid fibrils 
patient enrollment for miridisap followed by anti SAP antibodies was suspended and this approach is not being currently evaluated. However, a monoclonal antibody designed to specifically target TTR amyloid deposits PRX004 has entered clinical evaluation with an ongoing phase 1 study on variant ATTR. The final uh, heading in this uh, outstanding uh, review is supportive treatment of cardiac involvement. There are five major points regarding this. First, drug therapies. Although ACE inhibitors, ARBs and beta blockers may have been poorly tolerated. Nevertheless, in the ATTR ACT trial, 30% of patients were on ACE inhibitors or ARB. There is no data with digoxin in TTR amyloid and non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers are contraindicated due to negative inotropy. Point number two, ICDs. In one study, which included 53 patients with amyloid, ICD shocks occurred exclusively in the AL amyloid group and none in the TTR amyloid patients. Higher defibrillation thresholds and complication rates are of concern. Third point regarding supportive treatment and of cardiac involvement, cardiac pacing. In a large series of uh, variant ATTR related polyneuropathy with 262 patients, a pacemaker was implanted in 110 patients with the his ventricular interval greater than 700 milliseconds. The authors recommend that any conduction disturbance on 12 lead EKG warrants further investigation with Holter monitoring to determine candidacy for a pacemaker. The fourth point is regarding left ventricular assist devices. Although technically feasible, it is associated with higher short-term mortality and worse outcomes than in dilated cardiomyopathy. And the final point is on cardiac transplantation. This is a valuable option for patients with end-stage heart failure when significant extra cardiac disease has been excluded. In one study with 10 patients, only one episode of amyloid recurrence in the cardiac graft. The Stanford Cardiac Transplantation Evaluation Guidelines for ATTR summarizes the screening examination for transplant candidates. This podcast concludes Heart of the Press review of two important articles, one in JAMA and one in European Heart Journal on transthyretin amyloidosis.